I have already done my electrical to VLSI transformation video. But the reason to make this video again is because the year has been changed and the lot of things got updated. Companies have new expectations even from freshers compared to the expectations they were having at my time. So what do we do in this video? Mein? Basically, I will discuss all the details about my VLSI job preparation that I done way back in 2020. Also, I will be telling you why that strategy won't work now. What additional will be required on top of previous methods to clear the test and the interview. So let me take you on a ride of my electrical to VLSI transformation and also to explain what has changed in these three years. Look guys, I have done my BTEC in electrical engineering and my BTEC final year was a year of COVID. Gate results came and it was disappointing for me as I was expecting 800 plus score but got only 635. However, it was just 8 months preparation and video for my gate preparation is at I button. It was the gap between BTEC and MTEC, basically the COVID time when I got to know about electronics more. Basically, when we were sitting at the lockdown, tha, at that time, I got to know about future scope of electronics, especially in the semiconductor domain. So that's why I decided to go for MTech VLSI. My mediocre score didn't face me very best colors, but yes, I got an IT Raurkela, which was third best NIT at that time. Now I am starting with my approach, what I was thinking at that time, what all problems I faced during preparation. In between, I will keep mentioning what additional is required now. Being from an electrical background, I was more inclined towards machines, power systems, power electronics during my graduation. But as we all know, VLSI is all about digital and analog IC design and related processes. I rarely paid attention to EDC and analog electronics during my great preparation and that's the reason I was extra curious. I completed analog electronics playlist one by Dr. Behzad Rajvi and numericals from gate coaching lectures available on YouTube during the MTech counseling process itself. Matlab jo counseling ka time tha, us time pe maine analog electronics one khatam kar di thi. Because I know once I would be into MTech, I won't get the time to complete these fundamentals. And guys, fundamentals are the must to become master of any domain. After this, I revised digital electronics as soon as the MTech academics got started. Because digital VLSI pe journey karni thi mere ko to digital electronics to aana hi chahiye. Wo bhi achche se aana chahiye. So I was completely new to this electronics world at the beginning of my masters. Haan bas itna ho gaya tha ki digital aur analog electronics badhiya se padh li thi. And no matter how active you are, once you are into something new, your time would get wasted. Same happened with me as there was no proper roadmap available at YouTube for VLSI job preparation during my time. So much content from NPTEL and individual creators got me confused as it was not well summarized. It took me approximately a month to figure out the best. And once MTA is started, you have just 4 to 5 months of proper time to do your preparation. After first semester, internship opportunities starts. And after second semester, companies start to visit for full time role. So, I have to say that I have to say that I have to say that VLSI have two major domains analog VLSI and digital VLSI. Both are further divided to front end and back end. I figured out that I would be going to digital VLSI domain. We don't have that much control to exactly decide whether we will be going to front end VLSI or back end VLSI. We may choose analog or digital, but to specifically choose front end or back end is kinda difficult because it is decided by the hiring process and the type of opportunities or the type of companies visiting your college at that particular time. So I just prepared all the VLSI subjects in NIT academics. In fact, just to know complete picture, I properly read analog IC design as well. You may download my notes from link in description and guys, note making is an art. You need to properly understand the lectures and write the same in your own understanding. It takes time but very beneficial, your understanding becomes crystal clear with the help of note writing. Although analog IC design was not required for me as I was sure to go into digital VLSI domain, still with love for electronics and with love for Dr. Vahjad Rajvi's teaching style, watched all the lectures from electronics 2 series as well and also took the notes that was about analog IC design. Now let me take you the subjects which really helped me in my digital VLSI job interview. Since it was digital VLSI job profile, hence the primary subjects were digital IC design, hardware modeling using Verilog, low power VLSI design, testing and verification aspects, computer architecture. There are many courses for digital IC design on YouTube. 
but the one from iit madras janki raman sir is very popular now and trust me it just help you in vlsi very much i have watched it at 1x speed and sometimes watched the lecture twice to properly understand as this subject is very deep share the notes for this subject as well with you guys you will find the link in description in fact you will find all the my notes link in description for low power vlsi and testing verification aspects i followed it kharagpur and ptl course and also the lectures from my own college teachers both collectively helped me since my interview was for front end role so inme se jyada kuch mere se pucha nahi gaya But yes, few questions were there like clock tree, meta stability, clock gating. For computer architecture, followed the course from IIT Guwahati shown on your screen. Up to my MediaTek internship interview, I was able to cover only basics of computer architecture, and coincidentally, only those were asked in the interview. For Verilog hardware modeling, using Verilog course from IIT Kharagpur. and i practiced verilog either on sdl bits or on eda playground website and sometimes i used vivado tool as well apart from this you should read c as well because verilog syntax matches with c and most of the companies expect basic c knowledge i followed code with harry channel for the same you don't need to have c knowledge at computer science student level but yes topics like loops arrays pointers searching sorting should be clear between all this time i was able to do few mini projects such as gcd calculator and fsm based very log coding for basic basic problems and that was all the preparation which faced me a vlsi internship and mediatek and further one more interview happened before getting a pre placement offer from the same company now we are at 2024 and companies have increased expectations from pressures if you are targeting front end vlsi you must focus on system very log as well it is basically an extended version of very log and has features which ease the process of verification for back end You may learn any scripting language like Tickle, Python, Perl, etc. to increase your chance. The projects must be little more detailed now. Like GCD calculator and all the very very simple ones won't work now. It worked during 2020, but it won't work now. You should do them to clear your basics and to enhance your understanding of Verilog. But once you are done with basics, you should go with projects such as Asynchronous Fifo Design and Verification, APB to AHB. ब्रिज वेरिफिकेशन ए पी बी आर टी एल वेरिफिकेशन रिस्क फाइव प्रोसेसर डिजाइन और रिस्क फाइव में जो छोटे छोटे इन्हेंसमेंट हो सकते हैं कि आपने ओपन सोर्स डिजाइन उठाई और उसमें कुछ ईयर एंड डीयर चेंजेस क्या आप गूगल करिएगा आपको बहुत सारे टॉपिक्स मिल जाएंगे यू कैन चूज एनी वन एंड सो ऑन डीज टाइप ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स वुड मेक यूर रिज्यूम स्ट्रॉगर अगर ये पॉसिबल है देन यूज यू वी एम मेथोलॉजी वाइल डूइंग वेरिफिकेशन ऑफ एब प्रोजेक्ट ईडी प्ले ग्राउंड वेबसाइट इनेबल्स यू टू डू दिस ऑल If you can do in UVM environment as of now, then do verification in system very log. But at least read about benefits of UVM methodology. Read about various protocols and choose about thesis topic aligned with current market trends. So that your M Tech major project itself make you learn various trending VLSI concepts. And these are the things which would make you stand out from crowd. Conclusion is you must make your strategy as per the requirement of current time. Now fundamentals and hands-on experience on some projects both are required. That's it for the video. Keep exploring electronics.